Hi, my name is Hannah Jane. Welcome to Abandoned Iceland. Today we are in the Heismurk National Park, I think. Is it a national park? Did I fuck this up already? Okay. Uh, well, Heismurk is an area, it's about 15 minutes away from Reykjavik with a lot of hiking trails. Uh, it's very unique because there's lots of different environments here. There's forest, there's lava fields, there's these beautiful red cliffs, which you'll see a little later in the video. There's also some gorgeous, gorgeous lakes. So we are currently in the forest, as you can tell. Now, Iceland is not known for its forest. There are very few in the country. Um, so it's a pretty unique spot to visit. It's also a very relevant spot because the Iceland uh, Forest Service came out with an announcement that said if you were feeling particularly lonely during this uh, coronavirus pandemic, instead of hugging a person to, you know, satiate your feelings of solitude, you should hug a tree. So what better place to go to get some love in? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> but um, it's, it's very uh, otherworldly in a way. When you live in Iceland long enough, you sort of forget what it's like to be surrounded by trees. Uh, and you go here and it seems very spiritual. It's also probably the best weather we've had all year. It's stunning outside. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> Another interesting fact about trees, ooh, trees in Iceland is that, okay, so as I said before, Iceland is not known for its trees. I do not believe any trees are endemic to the island. I could be wrong, but I'm 99% sure that anything higher than your waist is not endemic. But per capita, Iceland has some of the highest amount of trees. Yeah, per capita. So that means for every person in Iceland, I think it's 2,083, could be wrong, uh, but there's 2,083 trees for every person who lives in Iceland, which is extraordinarily high when you compare it to other countries. This is not really because Iceland has a particularly large amount of trees. This is because Iceland has a particularly small amount of people. Uh, you can't really compare the amount of trees we have here per uh, kilometer to other countries because it's very, very low. Oh, uh, gosh. I think one of the unique things about forests in Iceland that you won't find in forests anywhere else in the world is how clean they are in that there's no bugs, there's no uh, animals, there's no, uh, I guess, like densely growing vines or shrubbery. It's just moss and trees and maybe a few other plants, which is super interesting. I think it makes it very like ethereal, like if you've read Lord of the Rings and you know Lothlorien, uh, if you imagine these trees were like eight times their size, I imagine that's what it would be like. Because do you ever notice that in fantasy novels, they're always running through forests, but there's no like bugs or like, I don't know, you know. So this forest is quite young, but in the grand scheme of things, everything in Iceland is really quite young. So that doesn't mean much. This is a very popular location uh, to go horseback riding in, to go trail running in. I believe you can come cross-country skiing here in the winter, but don't quote me on that, please. It is a bit of a trippy situation to be in an environment like this. I grew up in a very heavily forested in, uh, area where there were trees everywhere. So it's quite nostalgic for me. It makes me want to just sort of like get off the trail and go into the lair of the leaves. Should I do that for the video? Just be like, bye, nice talking to you. Sick.
Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to ab <laughs> Welcome back to abandoned Iceland. My name is still Hannah Jane. We have moved locations and now we are about to walk onto the beautiful shores of Elizavat. Uh, which is hard for me to say with my speech impediment. Elizavat. Yes. But as you can see, we're started in a little wooded area. There's some sort of bizarre decorations everywhere. Very Blair Witch. I'm not into it. But in just a few meters, you will see a beautiful expanse of azure blue waters. Fuck, ow. Sorry, I have a hurt knee right now. So it hurts when I go downhill. I ran a little too much. Flex. I recently read that book, or reread the book Born to Run, and it heavily inspired me to say that I was born to run. But maybe I'm not. Ow. Okay. So get ready. Do you know that video when Logan Paul sees color for the first time and he looks at the sunset and he's like, oh. and there's really inspirational music in the background? That's how I feel right now. So Elizavat is a really beautiful little lake with a very nice path around it, which we're gonna walk a little of right now. Uh, as I said before, the interesting part about Heidmark is how varied the landscape is. Need I say more? There's some people who fish in this lake. I don't know if people swim in it. I once shot a music video here where we tried to swim in it, but it was too cold and we thought we were going to die. So that didn't work. I think uh, another thing that's super interesting about Heidmark is that it just, in general, it's quite incongruous with the rest of the country, I guess, appearance-wise. The flora, the fauna, I suppose, um, it just doesn't really fit in with the rest of the country. It seems like it was plucked out of Norway or something, I don't know. So I always find that pretty, pretty peculiar. Welcome back to Abandoned Iceland. We have moved to our last location in Heidmark. These are uh, the Rauðhólar, the Red Hills. They are the most recognizable part of Heidmark. So when people in Iceland think of Heidmark, they will think of these crazy gorgeous red hills. They're truly unhumanly gorgeous. Uh, and there's a lot of different hiking trails around here. There's usually quite a lot of horses running around. So there's literally horse poop everywhere you go. So you have to watch out for that. If you're looking at the uh, places you can go within 15 to 20 minutes of Reykjavik, there is really nothing to compare to Heismark and the Red Hills. It's very Game of Thrones if Game of Thrones had stopped at the sixth season and not fucked itself over. When you come to places like this, you really do get the sense that you're on a different planet. So thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider signing up for our High Five Club. Uh, if this is the easiest way to support the grapevine. Uh, for just a few euros a month, you can ensure that, you know, we get to create this kind of content and that our company lives on in the face of this awful pandemic, which is really heavily affecting Iceland and the tourism industry in particular. Um, my name is Hannah. Thank you so much. I hope I did okay today. <laughs> Cheers.